Disturbing accusations are being made about a foundation called Heal for Life that runs retreats for child sexual abuse victims in four states of Australia. It was founded by the high-profile former TV and movie casting agent Liz Mullinar. It runs programs for children as young as seven years old, as well as teenagers and adults. Many abuse victims who attend its week-long healing sessions report positive results. But the problem is that some of those survivors are then recruited as carers themselves and after just a few days training are responsible for looking after others who've been severely traumatised by abuse. Some of those carers have now come forward to 7.30. They complain of inadequate training, routine self-harm, bizarre allegations of a satanic cult and false recovered memories of ritual abuse. Rebecca Bailey has this exclusive report. Thousands of child abuse survivors have made this journey over the past 14 years. They come to Heal for Life in the New South Wales Hunter Valley to recover from trauma they suffered as children. A healing week here involves giving yourself the space and the time to allow oneself to remember the things that were painful and hurt in childhood and to allow that child part of oneself to grieve or cry or be angry that it happened and then let it go. Heal for Life advertises a 90% success rate, but some former staff and volunteers have told 7.30 they've left here feeling more damaged than when they arrived. I went there to heal and they only caused me more trauma. For the first time in my life, I... Um and medically unable to work, and it's been about eight months now. You need to feel safe to heal. It wasn't a safe place. The Heal for Life retreats near Cessnock, 150 kilometres north of Sydney. There are also centres in Victoria, Queensland and Western Australia. Heal for Life was set up in 1999 by former high-profile film casting agent Liz Mullinar and her husband, Rod Phillips. The young women I work with at Heal for Life, I have one common complaint when they go to hospital having tried to kill themselves. Nobody ever asks why. And if they did, they would get the same answer from all those young people. Because of my internal pain from my childhood. Liz Mulliner was inspired by her own childhood ordeal. As an adult, she recovered memories of being abused as a child. She sold up everything, and the Hunter Valley Retreat became her mission. People would say to me, are you sure your memories are real, Liz? And that is deeply hurting. The 7.30 report visited Heal for Life's New South Wales centre, known as Mayumari, 12 years ago. We're about healing rather than uh, healing the effects. We say it's heal the cause, that sense that you're dirty, guilty, extra fear. And, and we try to get people to learn that it's, they can heal themselves. Child abuse survivors aged from seven years to adult attend five-day live-in sessions at Heal for Life. Some guests are then recruited to become carers after just six days in-house training. Carers can do more training to become facilitators and then go on to run the so-called healing weeks where participants are encouraged to draw pictures to connect with their damaged inner child. You're encouraged to, at another part of the process, to take that deeper and to then go to a place of trauma in your childhood um, with the child, basically. Um, and that's the place where people get very distressed. Child abuse survivor Dragan Zan Wright is a tertiary qualified psychotherapist who attended a healing week as a guest and then became a carer and facilitator. I just got completely burnt out after a year. I was, I was a wreck when I left that place. Absolutely, um, absolutely traumatised by the experience. Kira Timewell was sexually abused as a child. Like the majority of guests, she says her healing week was a positive experience. But problems began once she became a volunteer carer after only two and a half days training. I don't believe it's right that I'm in charge of other adolescents or children. Um, there were times on the program where 
another carer, for example, decided to uh, cut herself and I was the only responsible person there and I had, you know, six guests to look after who were all in a really bad place as well as having this carer cut herself. I don't have first aid training. I am not a counsellor. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychologist. What I am is a get, like a victim, who's learning how to deal with my life. No way! <laughs> how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Many of the people 7.30 spoke to claim self-harming is common amongst young women at Heal for Life and seem to be condoned by some carers. The thing about self-harm was that it got much worse when I was at May Murray. I've got scars on my arm now, like, that I feel are a direct cause by them because I didn't do it beforehand. That was something I learnt from them. That was something that was encouraged. You they know. encouraged Well, I to feel indirectly because they suggested it, they talked about it, they asked me about it as if it was something I should be doing. I think it's very common, whether it's through um, encourage, like the... the even though it's not encouraged to do it, it's accepted that that's one form of coping mechanism for survivors. All carers have first aid training, but that's it, basic first aid training. I've cared for several people where I've had to tend to their wounds. Um, and as a self-harmer, my, a former self-harmer myself, that it's, I found it very challenging to, to deal with other people's wounds. I came out of my healing week self-harming quite regularly again. And in different ways than I'd ever done before. I went on to doing things like burning myself with scalding water or um, pulling my hair out, just walking into doors on purpose. Dragan Zan Wright says the six-day carer training was inadequate preparation for the job and the only professional psychologist at Heal for Life was part-time and not readily available. You need that support. You're dealing with extreme situations. I mean, I came across stuff I'd never come across, you know, as a, as a therapist. Like what? Um, extreme self-harm, psychosis, dissociative identity, um, you know, those sorts of um, people that come from a satanic ritual abuse background. I mean, that's extreme. By the end of my five years there, I had uncovered satanic ritual memories, which I now know are false because yeah. I was never involved in that. The whole thing, it's just... Once Heal for Life devotees and all childhood trauma survivors, these former guests, volunteers and employees are now speaking out about their time at the Hunter Valley Retreat. And I can quickly... They've told 7.30 that the CEO, Liz Mulliner, has recovered memories of satanic ritual abuse, or SRA, in her own past. And they say she often suggested that others were also victims of satanic abuse. Liz suggests that satanic cult is part of a lot of people's story, childhood story, mine included. The amount of crazy and horrific stories I heard directly from Liz's mouth about cult activities within the Hunter, for example, apparently the Hunter is one of the points on the star or it could be the centre of the star. I went there as a guest to deal with my childhood issues around sexual and physical and spiritual abuse. Harry Callaghan was a guest, carer and facilitator at Heal for Life for 12 years. Over that time, he became very close to Liz Mulliner, describing himself as her right-hand man. And I became mesmerised by her and believed everything that came out of her mouth. He was sacked early last year after admitting he'd had consensual sex with two adult women who had been guests at the retreat. After he left, Harry Callaghan claims Liz Mulliner spread rumours that he was involved in a satanic cult and that he had been sexually abusing women at Heal for Life. It was torture. For me, you know, I've done lots of silly things in my life and I've owned up to each of them. Um, but this stuff, it's madness. Two women 7.30 has interviewed say that Liz Mulliner told them directly that Harry Callaghan was a satanic cult member who had abused them. She said to me, I'm so glad, Kira, that you now recognise that you have parts implanted in you by Harry and that you've been accessed. Liz was suggesting that I 
had been um, accessed by Harry and taken to the cult, that I had been abused by Harry and taken by the, back to the cult. Di Frost was the education and training coordinator at Heal for Life until she resigned in April this year. It's almost like a, a, a focus, an intense focus on the cult and a bit of, and I do think there's a bit of paranoia around the cult attacking. So even me speaking now is because I'm being accessed by the cult or, you know, um, that will be the reasoning behind um, anything that's happening that's against Heal for Life. We were led to believe that there were groups of people out to destroy Heal for Life and we were told people were baddies, you know, a lot of psychiatrists are baddies. Leanne Ween is a former nun. Suffering depression, she went on a Heal for Life healing week three years ago before becoming a paid office employee. They said to me that, you know, I, I think you're probably under spiritual attack. And I was quite frightened of that. I felt sickened. And um, as a Christian, I found that very hard, a very difficult, fearful, dark environment to be in. In December last year, Leanne Ween was made redundant. Then, she says, another staff member claimed that she'd recovered memories that Leanne was leading a satanic cult. Oh, there was a whole lot of things she said, that I'd been accessing people, accessing meaning making contact with people to um, get them involved in the cult, I think. Um, and um, I laughed. When Bernie told me I laughed initially, because it's, it's so ridiculous. And I said to Liz, do you believe this? And about Leanne being part of a satanic cult? And she said yes. I do believe it. And Liz also said that, um, that my life was in danger. Liz had said that she believes that Leanne is high up in the cult. A high priestess is what she said. 7.30 approached Liz Mulliner and Rod Phillips, her husband and chairman of the Heal for Life board, for on-camera interviews. They declined. Mr Phillips gave a written response. Certain comments about Ms Ween were made as a private view of a staff member to a small group of other staff members at HFL. The CEO was not present, so cannot comment. As for the claims about Harry Callaghan... The HFL board and management have not accused Mr Callaghan of anything. And on the subject of self-harm... HFL neither accepts nor tolerates self-harm. Guests or volunteers are generally asked to leave a program if they breach the rule against self-harm. I feel very let down. I feel angry. Uh, I, I want to see a solution to it. One of Heal for Life's biggest supporters, property developer and champion sailor Graham Oborn, is disgusted by the allegations by the former carers. He donated half a million dollars in memory of his mother, Eva, who had spent her life caring for children. The money funded Eva House, the young women's centre where many of the incidents of self-harm are alleged to have occurred. My initial reaction was, do I take my mother's picture down? take her citation, tell Heal for Life not to call at Eva House anymore and walk off, or set about trying to rectify the wrongs. A Heal for Life board member for three years until 2009, Graham Oborn took his and ten other complaints from former guests and staff to the board in January this year. You've got the CEO and the chair of the board is husband and wife, and one of the board members is the son of the husband and wife. I don't think you can get impartiality in making very, very critical decisions in those circumstances. Liz Mulliner's husband, Rod Phillips, says a board subcommittee conducted a thorough review of those complaints and appointed an external health accreditation company to conduct an independent review of HFL's practices, policies, procedures and staff perceptions, that review was very positive. This report does not identify lack of supervision as an issue and a counsellor has been employed to better support volunteers. 
I wonder what would, would have happened to this world if someone had healed Adolf Hitler from his much acknowledged child abuse. While some of the board members have changed since these complaints were raised, Liz Mulliner remains CEO and her husband Rod Phillips remains chairman of the board. An investigation needs to be done into the running of the place. Um, I think Liz should probably st step aside for a while and just let that happen and let someone look into it. And maybe Liz needs some support or something too because really this stuff shouldn't be happening. Rebecca Bailey with that report produced by Jacqueline Hole.